In this lesson, we will split our data frame into X and Y variables, which are often called features and target, also called independent variables and dependent variables, which means the data that we do have and the data that we need to predict our target. So visually, we see that years of experience is the data that we do have and salaries is something that we need to predict. In this case, our X variable, our feature is just one column, but in real life data, and we will see that in future examples, we often have more than one column of features. So in addition to years of experience, salary may depend on programming language, city, company they work in, and other variables as features. It just so happens that we start from simple example with just one column. Now Pandas library will help us to split into X and Y. We start a new cell in notebook. Another shortcut is B, new cell, then enter to write code. And we start writing X equals something. We'll get to that. And Y equals something else. And we will use a feature called I loc, which stands for I location with syntax of rows and columns that you want to filter. For example, if you want to have the row number one and column number two, and rows and columns enumeration starts with zero, then this is the syntax. For now, let's skip the Y and let's just show the X. So this will be the result, the first row, the second column. So this is how you play around with rows and columns. Other examples, for example, one and two will give us an error because there's no such column, of course, but one and one will give us this column. Also, you may specify the parameter with minus one, which stands for starting from the end. So minus one will be the same result, but minus two will be the column from the right, the second column from the right, which is nine. Also, you may select a few rows and a few columns, and this is exactly what will happen most often in machine learning projects. So for example, instead of just row number two, you may specify from zero, and let's take three rows. We execute that, and now we have the structure of three rows with just minus two columns. Similarly, instead of minus two, we can do zero and one like that. And now we have the full structure. This actually doesn't make much sense. Let's try zero and two like this. Also that zero is optional. If you provide just like that, Python will assume, Pandas will assume that we need to start from zero. So this is the same syntax and this is the same syntax. Also, negative syntax can be possible. So this will mean first three rows and all columns except for the last one. And guess what will happen if we have this? All rows from the beginning to the end. And this is actually exactly what we need to do here. Features, all the X variables will be all rows with all the columns except for the last one. And we can execute that and then Y variable, let's put it in another Jupyter Notebook cell at the bottom. Y equals DF, I loc, also all rows, but just the last column. So just minus one. And let's see Y values. So just one column. Also for more convenient work in the future with such data, we add values at the end and the result will be more Python-like view of list but we have a huge list of 100 rows. Well, not huge, but not convenient to read. And just for the sake of remembering the structure, let's show the first five rows. And in this case, we cannot do X head anymore because it's not a data frame anymore. It's a list. So we use Python syntax of zero to five, first five rows. Similarly in Y values, and let's show from zero to five. Keep in mind that X is a matrix, it's array of arrays, and Y is one dimensional array. This is exactly because linear regression is built for the cases of multiple features, multiple X values, multiple columns in X, and Y is a single one target. It just so happens, as I told you before, that we have one column, but structurally, it's a matrix. So yeah, that's it for this lesson. We actually transformed the data frame into features and target. In the next lesson, we will visualize that to demonstrate you why it is a linear regression.